love than you say. But look at what has happened to New York and the other states, all run by radical left Democrats, every single one. Our heavy industries have exported overseas and our middle class has been eviscerated, right here at home, been eviscerated. Housing costs are out of control. Inflation has cost a typical family $28,000. Think of it, in less than four years, $28,000. And we filthy encampments, we have horrible, disgusting, dangerous, filthy encampments of junkies and homeless people living in places that our children used to play Little League Baseball. Which you don't get to play very much anymore, do they? Over the past three years in New York City, there has been a 29% increase in robbery, a 36% increase in felony assault, a 42% increase in grand larceny, a 75% Car jackets, buy a nice car late. Well, 200 police officers leave the NYPD, New York's finest. I always say that. New York's finest. They leave every single month. They're incredible people. The trains in some ways are squalid and unsafe. The median of our highway, all those comedians, they spend all that money, they're falling down, they're rotting. Businesses are fleeing, the mobs of illegal migrants are being put up in luxury hotels at your expense, while our great veterans live on the freezing or steaming sidewalks right outside the main entry, where the migrants enter their hotel. Think of it. Think of it. We have veterans lying on the street, squalid. Lying on the street, sometimes freezing, sometimes it's hot, it's summer. And they're looking at people coming in, just came into our country, and they're going up to the 17th floor of their suite. How crazy has our country become? And can you imagine what those veterans, when they watch this, must be saying? But listen to this, can you also imagine what the migrants must be thinking? They're saying, can you believe this? We just came from a place, in many cases, they were in prisons. And now they're living in hotel suites while our veterans are living on the street. And so I say to the people of New York, with crime at record levels, with terrorists and criminals pouring in, and with inflation eating your hearts out, Vote for Donald Trump. What the hell do you have to lose?
of black support in the history of the Republic. And by the way, the Hispanic support, do we have any Hispanics? and they don't know what the hell to do about it. It's all the time. And we just had some great polling come out. I think the most accurate poll over the last eight or nine years was Rusty's. They just came out with a poll that were five up. We should be 35 up, to be honest. Some people can't break an old habit. So I say to you, vote for Trump, and I will turn it around very quickly with four more years of Kamala Harris. New York State will be like a third world nation if it isn't already. It is. I think it is. With Trump, the Empire State will once again be the envy of the entire world. We will have no crime, only success. And unlike your current radical Democrat regime, I'm not driven by partisan ideology, I'm driven by results, and I'm driven by New York common sense. It's common sense. Right? Right? Common sense. You know, I like to say the party is a great party. I like to say the party is really, you know, what they say. Like Who knows? You know what we are? We're really people with common sense. We need rules, we need good elections. We want low tax. We want great police officers that are well taken care of. We don't want to defund them. We're the party of common sense more than anything else. It's picked up a lot of stings, too. My first week back in the Oval Office, I will clean up and call up your governor and mayors all across your state, and I will tell them it's time to work together. They're largely Democrats. It's time to work together for the good of the people. And despite all of the persecution I've endured from the corrupt judicial system in New York, it's a corrupt system. I love the people of this state, and I want to give back. I want to give back to you. I've had a great life. I want to give back to you. I want to give back to you. I'm going to make this city and we're going to make this state incredible. Together we will rebuild our roads, bridges, highways, and airports. They're falling apart, they're falling down. We will renovate New York subway. Oh, that's beautiful. I used to go to school on the subway. Can you believe it? I mean, I like to say it's not so long ago, but it probably is. What do you think it is? I guess it is. But my parents would drop me off on the subway and I'd go to Union Turnpike or I'd go to World They would take me to a subway, put me on and say, bye darling, bye. If you do that today, you have about a 75% chance that you'll never see your child again. What the hell has happened here? What has happened? We will renovate the New York subways that the greatest city in the world finally has again, the greatest transit system anywhere in the world. You have the basics. You have to clean it. We have to take care of it. We have to give it a little love. And we have to get the criminals the hell out of there. <laughs> we will also support our incredible police officers. We will also Police group in the nation is supporting me. The other day, the Fraternal Order, it's the largest. They gave us 400,000 police and they gave us a unanimous endorsement. We have it from everybody. We will work with the mayors and the governor to rebuild your defunded and depleted police forces, including New York's finest and NYPD. Look, I know so much about I love New York's finest. I used to be in Brooklyn. I had an office with my father in Brooklyn. And we used to go in 
Brooklyn to a White Castle. Did anyone ever know? You couldn't beat this, this hoax of Democrats. He ended up winning. He's done such a good job, he's now unbeatable. They don't even run anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. We've got a lot of them. Joe Tyler's here. Joe, we're going to win. You know what happened. Don't mess with Joe, right, Joe? I love you, man. Your family's great. This is what happened. But I will stop the Kamala crime wave. We will do everything we can. We're going to get these violent criminals behind bars. We're going to get them out of our country. We're going to take them back to the country from which they came. A few months ago, I visited with the grieving family of the New York City police officer, Jonathan Diller. You know Jonathan Diller? I was hoping his family would be with us. He was just 31 years old. Gunned down during a traffic stop by a vicious thug, leaving behind his incredible wife, Stephanie, and family, and family, the one-year-old son, what a son, and it's, are you here? Are they, they could be here. Is, is Stephanie here? Because, you know, it was a bond, and she was so great, and I think she's here. It's hard when you have 19,000 people. Honestly, what she wants more than that, she wants her husband back, that's what she wants. She doesn't want adulation. I have other friends, you'd find them. I have other friends in the U.S. said their name, they'd be jumping at me. And what a great family, what a great family, what a great, great guy he was. The criminal charge was savagely murdering Officer Dillon, was previously arrested by the NYPD 21 times, right? 21 times, Bruce. And the accomplice driving the car had been arrested 14 times, but he was actually much worse. He was more vicious. 14 times, but he was actually far more vicious. This is the kind of story we hear every single day under radical Democrat policies like cashless bail, cashless bail. You kill somebody, disaster for our country. Kamala Harris wanted it no matter where she went. She boasted about being the leader of the movement of cashless mail, just like she led the effort to defund the police. You know, she was the leader of the effort to defund the police, and now she's running for president. But a little while ago, a little while ago, like everything else, no fracking, no this, no, she changed her mind. Now she says she likes the police. She can't say love, but she says like. She's made a lot of progress, but you know the first thing that would happen is she will go to defunding the police, and that's even possible. But when I get back into the Oval Office, the madness ends, and the law and order is going to return to us. public safety funding for New York and other Democrat-run cities that are under siege. But in exchange, they will give our police back their protection and their respect. We are going to take care of our police and we're going to respect our police. Everyone here does. I tell you all this is all You have no idea how the people love you, but sometimes they don't feel it because of what the Democrats do do. They will end deadly sanctuary city policies, they will terminate cashless bail, and they will return to proven policing methods like we had under Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Simultaneously, we are going to make life in New York State 
affordable again. Little word of fun. You vote for Kamala Harris, you vote for four more years of job losses. Look at what's happening. Businesses that are fleeing, money draining out of your state, and hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants sucking your public resources. You know, I've always heard for 20 years, I've heard that New York City has no money, and yet they're going to spend $3 billion on illegal migrants, and they're not getting it from the federal government. You wonder, they never had money, but they have $3 billion to take care of people that came into our country. Yeah, what about that? Trump economic plan, we will cut your energy prices in half within 12 months. Half! Because we have more food we go under our feet and we don't use it. We go to places like Venezuela when we have more than Russia, we have more than Saudi Arabia. You remember I got Anwar approved in Alaska. It's the biggest site anywhere in the world, probably bigger than Saudi Arabia, bigger than Russia. And what did they do? In the first week in office, Ronald Reagan tried so hard he couldn't get it. I got it. The biggest site in the world, Alaska. And in the first week in office, they terminated it. We'll have it back very quickly, I promise. We will rapidly defeat inflation. We're going to bring your prices down. All they're doing is they've cut it, but you're up 55 or 60 percent. People that used to live a nice life four years ago, they can't afford an apple. A woman, they showed a picture of a woman the other day. I said, boy, that's sad. That should never happen to her. She went to the counter, the cashier. She had three apples. And when she was standing with the cashier, she realized she didn't have enough money for one of the apples. And she took the apple, brought it back. And she bought two apples. That shouldn't be happening. You know? Yeah. That shouldn't be happening. Terrible. We will cut interest rates, cut insurance costs, and insurance is horrible. And massively, we will cut your taxes again. I gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country. Kamala Harris, as you look at her plan, will give you very simply the largest tax hike in American history. She's going to lift your taxes. This is the only person I've ever seen in Biden to. They announced that they're going to raise your taxes. It's supposed to be good politically. I don't think so. I've never seen that, Anthony, before, where they say they're going to raise your taxes. They're going to raise your taxes. The vote for them are going to raise your taxes. Can you believe it? I, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that because the news will say, Oh, tell me I'm gonna raise it. They're gonna say they're gonna attribute it to me. I can't do that. I told our great first lady I will not be sarcastic anymore. When you joke or when you're sarcastic, the fake news will take a story like that. I'll say, I never said I was gonna raise your taxes. Vote for me, I'll raise your taxes. Kitty, 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 kitty. Don't think people are the worst. The worst. When I imitated Joe Biden because he couldn't get off the stairs. So I imitated him because he couldn't find the stairs and look around and finish the speech with the class. The speech would last maybe three minutes, maybe a little less than that. And then you want to get off the stage and it always remember, it always go like this. But you remember that when I wanted to say you wanted to get somebody who's actually wants to ready. And you go like this. And Secret Service did a great job. They'd come up in the stage and they'd pull them out. Like today, we have four or five stairs. You always have four or five, six stairs. The more it's government owned, the more stairs you have. A, so I said to our great first lady, who can draw a crowd? Did you watch me tonight on television, first lady? People love our first lady. Yeah. She just wrote a book called Melania. Go out and buy it. It's right. And if she says bad things about me, I'll call you all up and I'll say, don't buy it. Get <laughs> no, but she said to me, I said, baby, did you see the crowd? We had 18,000 people. We could have filled it up three or four times. 
Bruce Blakeman said to me, you know, he said to me, you know, if we went to a stadium or a park, we would have had 100,000 people or more. So I call up my wife and I say, baby, who can draw crowds? Nobody can draw crowds like me. Nobody, nobody. That's my brother. I'm the greatest of all time, maybe greater even than Elvis, because Elvis had a guitar. I don't know. Say, baby, who can do it like me? Nobody can do it like me. How great am I? You know, I should say, I'd say, how great was the speech? Not how good. How great was it? And she'd say, it was good, but your hair looked terrible. <laughs> or the worst ever. So I said, how good was it, first lady? And she said, it was good, but you couldn't find your way off the stage. I was imitating Mike, and they said I did it. I couldn't find my way off the stage. Now, so you can't be sarcastic. Sarcasm with the media doesn't work. <laughs> so I've given up about, I've given up about 90% of it. I got all my friends here, Anthony. Anthony, stand up. Anthony, one of the one of the greats of all time. He said, I have a big business problem. What? I have too much cash. I don't know what to do. I said, I've heard of I've heard of worse problems than that Anthony. He's doing good. He's a great man, great businessman and a great person. Kamala wants income tax hikes, small business tax hikes, capital gains tax hikes. How about the capital gains? She wants a tax. Unrealized capital gain. That means she wants to give you a capital gain. Even if you have stock, she wants to give you a capital gain even if you didn't sell it. You know, I know a lot of people, they're very rich, but they don't have cash. They're rich, but they don't have cash. A lot of them. You know, it's like that. Farmers are like that. They have great land, great everything. They make income, but they don't have cash. And you know what I did for farmers and small businesses in the tax hike? And nobody talks about this. I got rid of the estate tax. So that, or the death tax, as they would call it. So that when you die and you pass it on to your children who you love, if you don't love your children, then it's not going to do you any good. Then there are those. Does anybody in this incredible arena, they did a nice job, by the way, fixing it. I remember the old one. Does anybody in this incredible arena not love their children? Who in the arena is rich and will not leave their money to their kids? Because if that's the case, then what they did for you doesn't matter. Do I have any hands? 20,000 people that have no hands. Okay, who wants to leave their money to their kids? Well, you know, in the old days, you'd leave the money to the kids, and what would happen? The kids would have to go out and borrow money, they'd lose everything. They had to borrow money from the bank at a high rate of interest. Now they don't have to do that anymore. Now you can leave your farm, you can leave your small business to your kids, but Kamala wants to end that. She wants to end it. She wants to raise your tax to a level that nobody's ever heard of before, and it's crazy. We will go in to a different, I thought this was a wise guy. This guy, I thought, I'm getting ready, I'm going with this. That was amazing. I was all ready to start duking it out. I felt like my man in the front row. Stand up, will you please? This is the toughest man. You know him? You all know him? I'm going to introduce you later. So you... He's the toughest guy. If somebody walked on the stage, he wouldn't be afraid. He would already be attacking the poor guy. And that was interesting, wasn't it? It's the first time that's ever happened. Is he new to the game? I think so. By contrast, I will cut taxes for families, small businesses, and workers, including restoring the salt deduction, saving thousands of dollars for residents of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and other high costs. Jobs and factories will pour back into New York. I know how to tell it better than anybody.
nobody's ever known how to do it. I'm going to do it Wages will soar, the cost of living will fall, and I will deliver the greatest economy in the history of the world to our country, and one of the greatest economies in the history of your state. And a key part of restoring safety and saving our economy is stopping the invasion at the border of our country. It's crazy. On the border czar, Kamala Harris, you know, she was the border czar until she started looking at this situation, until the coup. I say until the coup, because it wasn't. But she was a border czar. Now she said I was never the border czar. You know what? Give her that. But she was in charge of the border. And the border is the worst run border in the history of the world. There's never been a border like that. 21 million people, illegal aliens are coming in from all over the world, from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums. Many tourists are coming in just to watch. Did you ever see this? You have tourists that line up to take pictures of it. They usually turn out to be the fake news, and the pictures are so bad they never show it. You know, the fake news never, ever talks about it, but we have massive numbers of terrorists coming in to our country. You have everybody coming in. We have people that can't speak the language. The great Tom Holman told me the other day, great guy, Central Castro guy, great guy. He told me the other day, last month, they figured it out for the last 12 months, 168 different countries came in, represented, and came into our country. Most people don't even know you have that many countries. You actually have over 200, but most people don't know. But I want to be known as one thing. In 2016, I probably won because of the border. I did a great job. I cleaned it up in the border. Even though I got millions and millions more votes. They said, sir, if you get the same number of votes as you did in 2016, 63 million. Sir, you cannot lose. I got millions more. And I lost. But you know what? We're going to have the greatest win in history when we pull this off. I said, sir, uh, it doesn't help you to speak about the border. Nobody cares. I said, I want to speak about the border. I did a great job. Sir, nobody cares. It's true. I talked about the border. Nobody cared. But now they care. Because now the border is 25 times worse than it was in 2016. Now the border is not even believable what's happening. And I want to be known as your border president. I'm going to be known as your border president. Invasion president. Just let them all come in. Let them all come in. No, we gotta save our country. Our country's going down. If you look at what's happening with the Venezuelans taking over, I mean they're taking over large pieces of real estate in Colorado, and you have a Democrat governor who's petrified of them. He's afraid. I've never seen anything like it, and he doesn't want to talk about it. They've taken over your buildings and your land. You gotta do something about it. That wouldn't happen with Bruce Lightman, I can tell you right now. Bruce, would you let people come in from a foreign country like Venezuela, where, by the way, their crime rate is down 72% because they've taken their prisoners, they've taken their gangs, they've taken their drug dealers, and they've shipped them all to the United States, so their crime rates down. But Bruce, would you ever, would you ever tell the people that you're supposed to be protecting when they call? A lot of Venezuelans are in there, they have very big guns. Would you say, listen, I don't really want to do anything about it. Would you do that, or would you say, don't worry, we'll have a force of people over there within minutes, and it would all be over, right? Right? I think so. 
because it's so violent. They've never seen people like this. These are violent people that they're allowing into our country. It is truly an invasion, and we're not gonna let it happen. We're gonna take those violent people and we're gonna ship them back to their country, and if they come back in, It's not like, you know, this is not sustainable by any country. This is not sustainable. How about in Springfield, Ohio? They have 32,000. This is a little beautiful town. No crime, no problem. 32,000 illegal immigrants come into the town. So they almost doubled their population in a period of a few weeks. Can you believe it? And you know what? They've got to get much tougher. I'm going to go there in the next two weeks. I'm going to Springfield and I'm going to Ohio. You may never see me again, but that's okay. Whatever happened to Trump? Well, he never got out of Springfield. I'm leading in Ohio by like 15 points a lot. And we're going to take care of Ohio. State of the Union. They're all under siege. A lot of people don't talk about it. But think of this. So the mayor of Springfield, and I think he's a very nice person, but instead of saying we're getting them all out, we're getting them out, he says very simply, we're hiring teachers to teach them English. We are hiring interpreters. So when they go to school and take the place of our children in school, we have an interpreter. Each one will have a private interpreter. What the hell is wrong with our country? No, no. We're getting them out of our country. They can't do anything. They're destroying our country. We're getting them out. They're going to be brought back to the country from which they came. I will protect our country. I will protect our country. Think of it. She will surrender our country. That's what they're doing. They still refuse to acknowledge that these people have to be taken out. And you start with the stone cold killers, the murderers, the drug dealers. You start, you get them out, and you tell them if they ever come back, big trouble. But let me tell you what you really do. Some of them are so bad you can't take the chance of sending them out because they'll come back. You lock them up, and they're going to be there for a long time. And when they know that, when they know that, You'll see a whole big difference, as you know. Here on Long Island, the open borders policies of Kamala Harris, and it were really her policies, and the communist left, I call it the communist left, have been importing MS-13 gang members by the thousands. I don't know what it is about Long Island, but you know, I took thousands and thousands of gang members out. You remember the story? Remember, I came into the presidency, and MS-13 was on my mind because I saw that in Long Island, two beautiful young girls were walking to school. They were 16 years old, and an MS-13 gang of deviants grabbed the girls and sliced them up into pieces. Not with guns, they didn't want guns. They killed the two girls. They sliced them into little pieces. Wicked! And I never forgot that. And then I found out that things like that are happening all over wherever they are. MS-13, the worst gang anywhere. The only thing good about that is they make our gangs look like very nice people. <laughs> These are the worst people. They're animals. Yeah. And Nancy Pelosi said, you shouldn't call people animals. That's not appropriate. They're animals. That's the philosophy. And I said, I got to the White House. And I said, they have a lot in Ohio, a lot in every state. And I said, I want MS-13 out of here. They come from various places, a little bit a little bit south of Mexico. They come from Mexico, too. And I said, what I want you to do is I want to bring them out. And a general said, sir, I'm sorry, sir. The countries will not, under any circumstances, allow us to bring them back in. They don't want them anymore, sir. I said, how long has this been going on? Many years during the... Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? <laughs> Many years, sir, under the Barack Hussein Obama administration. It's been going on for years. 
police and they won't take them. You know what they did? They would take Honduras, okay? Think of it. They would take planes and they would put them on the runways. They would put the planes, El Salvador, of different countries, some of the roughest gangs. They put big commercial aircraft. So when a plane is going to fly in with two or three hundred MS-13 killers, you couldn't land the plane. They said, sir, we can't get them back. All of the bus routes are blocked. We can't get the buses in. And when they know a plane is coming, they put planes on the runway. Sir, we won't be able to do it. I said, I think you will. How much money do we pay them for economic development of the dictator's house? How much money do we pay them, General? I'll get back to you, sir. He comes back and they say, sir, we pay them $750 million a year. It's uh, a lot. Let me tell you, it's peanuts compared to some of the money. But it's a lot of money. He said, inform these countries that under no circumstances are they getting any money anymore. They're not getting any money. They are delinquent. They're not allowing us to bring back people that they force into our country to trap the caravan. So they informed them, and the next day I get to the Oval Office nice and early, and uh, I get calls from three particular countries separately. Sir, there seems to be a problem or a misunderstanding. I said, yeah, there is a misunderstanding. You're not taking your MS-13 people that you sent into our country. You're not taking them back. And I'm going to not give any money to your country forever. You're never getting tense. And in all cases, they said something to the effect, Sir, sir, it is so bad that I didn't know about this. I wish I would have known about it. We would love to take MS-13 back into our country. We love to be we will take them back, sir. And that day, that afternoon, we started bringing them out of our country by the thousands and thousands and thousands. And the worst part of the story is now I still didn't pay up. <laughs> but, but now they're getting four billion dollars a year under Biden. Biden said, do it. Maybe she knew about it. I don't want to blame her if she didn't, but four billion. You know why? Because he wants them to create a beautiful environment so that they say that that's not going to happen. The money's going to be stolen all over the place. The so instead of 750, it's now at four billion dollars. An estimated 75% of arrests in Midtown Manhattan and over 60% of arrests in Queens are now illegal aliens. Wow. Congratulations. What about that? Kamala Harris, she was in charge of the border, approached two 13-year-old children with a machete in broad daylight, forced them into the woods, tied them together by the wrist and raped them, injured them terribly, very badly, you know about it. In the Bronx, another illegal alien that Kamala Harris set loose into our country approached a 36-year-old woman while pretending to ask for directions. Ma'am, he said, I'd like directions to some of us. Before he wrapped his arms around her throat, pinned her down on a park bench, and raped her all night and beat the hell out of her. And you know what she said? Send him back. She said, he didn't rape me, he tried to kill me. That was her expression when the police came. And on Coney Island, the place I know well just weeks ago, two migrants, Kamala, Lenin raped a 46-year-old woman with a knife to her throat. She was badly, badly beaten, probably going to live. For every New Yorker being terrorized by this wave of migrant crime, and I've been talking about migrant crime for five years, I said, if you let them in, it's going to be hell. They are vicious, violent criminals that are being let into our country. They're people that they're countries who are very smart. They don't want them. That's why all over the world, a lot of people coming from jails out of the Congo in Africa. Where do you come from, the Congo? Where in the Congo? We come from jail, what did you do? We will not tell you. They're coming from the Congo, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from all over the world, Asia. A lot of it coming from Asia. And what's happening to our country is we're just destroying the fabric of life in our country. And we're not going to take it any longer. And you got to get rid of these people. Give me a shot. You will have a safe New York within three months.
Task Force, elite federal law enforcement people, many of whom I already know, that are tough, and charge them with crushing the MS-13 remnants. You know, the problem is I got them out, and now they come back in and just walk back in, but there's nothing to it. But eliminating MS-13 and every foreign gang and organized criminal network opening up on American soil, they're coming in by the millions, not by the hundreds. They're coming in by the millions. Think of it. Probably 21 million people, that's probably a, no, a low number. We can do all of this and more, but patriotic New Yorkers must get your asses out to vote. Yeah. Harry, get up, Harry. Harry, get your fat ass out of the house. You're going to vote for Trump today. You know, it's an interesting thing. Evangelical Christians, they tend not to vote very much. If they did, you'd never lose. Gun owners, I have the total endorsement of the NRA, have had it from the beginning. Gun owners don't vote, meaning they don't vote in a proportion that they should. Very small numbers vote. It's probably rebellion, who knows what it is. The gun owners have to get out and vote. Evangelicals, Christians have to get out and vote. There's some groups that don't vote like they should, and we're going to win. We're pleased to be joined tonight by members of Congress that are really terrific and are warriors, really warriors. And one of them in particular, I love what she did to that woman at Harvard. Oh, that was not pretty. Elise Stefanak. Thank you, Elise. Boy, she was great. Mark Molinero. Great. Nick Lalota. Thank you. Good job. He's doing a good job. Here's another one doing a good job. I gave him a big endorsement, Anthony D'Esposito. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Salt. Salt, Anthony. Remember, fellas. Salt. Brandon Williams is doing great. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you very much. Nick Langworthy. Terrific. Claudia Tenney. Where's Claudia? Where's Claudia? She's been amazing. Congressional candidates, Mike LePetri. I heard you leaving big. And Allison Esposito. She's a tough one. Allison, thank you. Thank you very much. It's tough, you know, when you have this many people moving around. What is one person? Thank you very much, Allison. You know, Senate candidate, Mike Sapriacom. Mike Sapriacom. Come on, Mike. Where's Mike? You gotta win, Mike. We gotta win that one, Mike. You can do that. You can do that. Now, former senator and a friend of mine for a long time, and we had disputes every once in a while, but generally I would say it was a 10 relationship. And he was a tough cookie, Senator Al D'Amato. Right? Good man. Good man. A great lawyer and congressman, and he helped me a lot during impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two. They were hoaxes. Congressman Lee Zeldin. Fantastic man, very shy kind of a guy. <laughs> he took crime, it was terrible. It was at a level that was as bad as today. And he made New York the safest big city in the world. Rudy Giuliani.
who happens to be a great golfer. A lot of people say, oh, how's Andrew? Not that good, let me tell you, he's seriously good. Andrew Giuliani, thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for a good job. And a very beautiful little boy who went through hell, but I brought him some presents. That's why I was late for you today. I brought him presents. I said, Liam, do you think the crowd of 20,000 plus a lot of people outside, you know, we put up big televisions on the back of the building, but that's not like me here. It's wonderful. Hello out there. I hope you're doing well. Big, big, beautiful screens. We have big screens. Not quite like being in the third row, first row. But Liam LaCastro is here, and he is a great young man. He's, he's, gone, through, he's gone through a lot, but he's going to be better soon. Right, Liam? And I've got him the most beautiful pleasure. He's a great boy, great parents, beautiful sister. Also with us are members of New York City Firefighters Union, Local 94, the largest in the state. Thank you, folks. Incredible people. And in your honor, I'm on, and, and I think this is a big deal, because in your honor, I am announcing tonight that as president, I will officially make the ground zero site at the World Trade Center a national monument. <laughs> Into your 
your social security and your Medicare system, which guarantees your benefits. She says, we must not utter the words illegal alien again or radical Islamic terrorist again. And think of this, during her three and a half year, to me this is the worst thing I talk about tonight. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. During her period of three and a half years, she was in charge of the board. She lost more than 325,000 migrant children, many of whom have been trafficked, raped, and many of whom are dead. Many of whom are dead. Three, think of what that is. That's like Yankee Stadium filled up many, many times. Think of it. Think of it. As California Attorney General, she redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person. I never heard of this. Rape of a very unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. She vowed repeatedly to ban fracking. She imposed a natural gas export ban that is crushing the state of Pennsylvania. I'm way up in Pennsylvania, by the way. This one. come back. I hope you know that. She praised the idea of a tax rate of between 70 and 80 percent. And her only idea for solving inflation is to impose communist inspired price controls, which have never worked. She pledged to abolish. Does anybody here have private health care? You worked hard. She wants to approach. She wants to abolish anybody that's worked hard and made some money. Private health care, no more private health care, and force everyone into a socialist government run health care with high taxes and deadly wait times. And she even endorsed free sex change operations for illegal aliens in detention. All the taxpayers. Think of that one. They come into the country illegally and they say, I want to change my sex. Oh, that's okay. She's totally in favor. I'm sure she'll deny it now, but she, that's what she. In 2021, Joe Biden tasked Kamala Harris with bringing broadband to rural America. Rural America was dying for it, and gave her 42 billion dollars to do the job. Three years later, right now, not a single home has been connected to broadband. Everyone say, what happened to the money? 42 billion dollars, not one home. And in the Midwest, you read this, in the Midwest, they built eight charging stations, just like a gas pump with electricity, right? Eight. They spent $9 billion to build eight charging stations. Under the, the, other than that, it really works well. I will end the electric mandate on cars. He's great. He's a great guy. And he makes a great guy. And as strong as I am on this, because I think they're incredible. But it's limited. Some people want them. Some people love them. I think they're incredible. And he makes a great product. Maybe the best product I hear. And he understands this. Some people have to go far distances. Some people don't want the additional cost. Some people don't want their car built in China. Electric cars will be built in China. I'm going to bring back the auto industry. We're going to have gasoline powered cars. We're going to have hybrids. We're going to have electric cars. We're going to have everything. The new one is hydrogen. I heard about that the other day. Hydrogen. There's one little problem. If it blows up, you're dead. It's great until one day there's a little bit of a problem, Anthony, and it blows up. And when that happens, it's not a pretty picture. So I, I think I'll take a pass on that one if you don't mind. And yesterday, three agencies of the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden administration, the FBI, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, they just released a report confirming that Iran actors hacked into the Trump campaign's email accounts and in turn sought to give the hack materials to the Biden-Harris campaign. They gave them all of the materials because Biden is working with Iran and Iran doesn't exactly like me because they were ready to make a deal except 
we had an election that was rigged and stolen. And look at what's happening to our world now. But no, Iran hacked into my campaign. I don't know what the hell they found. I'd like to find out. Couldn't have been too exciting. But they gave it to the Biden campaign. I can't believe it. Oh, yes, I can. But this is really foreign election interference. This is real election interference, not the phony crap they've been trying to pin on me with Russia, Russia, Russia for years. Whatever happened to Russia, Russia, Russia? Remember the 51 intelligence agents? They said, no, no. The laptop from hell. It's Russia. No, it was Hunter. <laughs> Mother, remember Mother? He said, in, in millions of phone calls, Trump didn't make one to Russia. They went through every phone call I made. Can you imagine? In millions of calls, not one call to me. And a lot of people apologize for that, but not enough people apologize. They wasted time and money. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars going after me, and they got nothing. They got nothing. But we cannot allow this insanity to continue anymore. That's why less than two months from now, we are going to tell Kamala that we've had enough. Kamala, you've been a terrible vice president. You will be an even worse president. We're not going to take it anymore, Kamala. Kamala, you're fired. stop the migrant invasion, an invasion like no country has ever seen before. We will stop it immediately. We will carry out the largest deportation operation of criminals in America. We will make America the dominant energy producer in the world. By far, we have more than that. And we have, literally, we have more. Think of it, we have more than Saudi Arabia. We have more than Anybody else, especially when you end Anwar in Alaska, which we will reinstitute immediately, we're going to use it along with growth. We are going to grow, grow, grow to start paying down our debt. We have $35 trillion in national debt. We were all set to do it. And then we got hit by COVID. We had a focus on that. And then we gave back. You know, I got a great, I got great marks on the military. We took out ISIS, wiped out ISIS. I mean, so. Four weeks, it was supposed to take four years, five years. And I got great marks in the economy, never got great marks in COVID because they didn't want to give them to me. But the fact is, we did an unbelievable job. Nobody knew what the hell it was. It came from China. It came from the Wuhan lab. I said all these things. And we did an unbelievable job. And we handed over a country whose stock market was higher than it was just prior to COVID coming in and amazing but we did have to focus on that think of what china did to us the world has 60 trillion dollars and millions and millions of people dead over that disaster think of that the whole world even china suffered very much they suffered at the end more than almost anybody i will turn the united states into a manufacturing superpower more than it has ever been before Car industry. Other countries that make us pay a 
tax to do business with them will be charged the same tax when they send their product into the United States. We have countries, not only China, many, many countries, many of them are allies. Some of the worst trading com- countries are allies. Don't let that word surprise you. They're allies, they're friends of ours, and they take advantage of us horribly on the military, with NATO, and on trade. It will be called the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act, and if China or any other country charges us a 200 or 100 or 300 percent tax, then we will charge them a like 100, 200, 300 percent tax in return. You charge us, we charge you. And my message is very simple. Make your product right here in Uniondale. Make your product in America. Make your product in America and only in America. And if you do that, Bruce, you won't have to pay a tax. And they'll be coming in here like you wouldn't believe, right? The worst that happens, we'll take in a lot of money, but we don't even want that. We want them to make their product. We're going to bring back the auto industry. Right now, China is building some of the largest auto plants in the world, and they're building them in Mexico. And they think they're going to build these massive plants, literally the biggest in the world. They're going to make millions of cars and sell them without tax across our border. We will put a tariff on all of those cars to a point where they won't be able to sell because we want them to build their plants in the United States and hire many of the people in this audience and that's what's going on. And we also have something that's basic, but wow, people said you're really smart. Where the hell did you think of this one? No tax on tips. But maybe better, no tax on overtime. And we're getting it done. We're getting it done. Unlike him with student loan debt that went nowhere, just to talk. We get it. I get it all done. Remember what they say: promises made, promises kept. That's me. And ready? Here's for the seniors. Do we have any seniors in the audience? You ready? No tax on social security. No tax on social security. And you know why you deserve it? Because you live like hell with the highest inflation probably in the history of our country, and you couldn't make ends meet. Now you're not going to have to pay tax for your social security. And I will always protect social security and Medicare, and they won't. They're going to destroy it. They're putting the migrants all over the place, including there. And while working Americans catch up, we're going to put a temporary cap on credit card interest rates. We're going to cap it at around 10%. We can't let them make 25 and 30 percent. We will terminate the Green New Scam and spend trillions of dollars on it. We're going to take the Green New Scam, one of the greatest scams in the history of our country. Remember when they used to say global warming? They don't say that anymore. They say climate change because the planet's actually getting cooler. Climate change, Chuck. Climate change is different. Yes, Chuck Zeno. Oh, I feel safe with him in the front row. Are you afraid of climate change, Chuck? Because now it's no longer global warming because that wasn't working so well because it was getting cooler. Now it's climate change because that covers it. It's warmer, it's cooler. We're going to take all of that money, we're going to take it, and we're going to rebuild. We're going to take this money from the green... New scam. It's a green new scam, one of the greatest scams in history. And we're going to spend it on roads and bridges and real infrastructure. And we're going to pay down debt, not fake infrastructure that's caused massive inflation and has no benefit whatsoever for our country. And I will settle the war in Ukraine. I got along very well with Putin and Zelensky. And I will end the chaos. 
in the Middle East. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote to obliterate Israel. That's what's going to happen. Israel will not exist in two years. And by the way, we are closer to World War III right now than at any time during anybody's life in this beautiful room. I will stand with Israel and we will return a big call for peace to France. We're going to get it settled. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. We're not going to have war in the Middle East. We're not going to have war with Russia and Ukraine. You know, when I was there, we didn't have any war other than ISIS. I finished them off. We knocked out al Baghdadi, the founder of ISIS. Think of that. We knocked them off. It was supposed to take four to five years. I did it in four weeks. General, General Raisin came. What's your name? Cain, sir, what's your first name? Well, they call me Raisin. I said, your name is Raisin Cain. That's the general I was with. He did it in four weeks. The Russian attack on Ukraine and the October 7th attack on Israel would never have happened if I was president. Think of what the world would be and think of what our nation would be with no Russia-Ukraine war, no October 7th disaster in Israel and the Middle East. They're just, it's inflamed right now. It's inflamed like nobody's seen it for 50 years. No inflation. And energy dominance. That's why we would have energy dominance. We'd have no inflation. We wouldn't have either the Middle East or the Russia, Ukraine. What a different world it would be, wouldn't it be? Oh, uh, we can't let them cheat on elections. We will rebuild our cities, including Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again. Right now, we have a, a capital that when you go down there, you have a damn good chance of being hurt about something. And we will keep the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. We're losing that. I'll keep it. China wants to take it over. And if that happened to us, that would be like losing a war. That would be the biggest thing. That would make us a third world country. We will keep our dollar as the reserve currency. Remember I said, and it will be easy. It'll be easy. But this is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem, misery under Kamala and Crooked Joe and unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. That's what we're going to do. Together we will deliver low taxes, low regulations, low energy costs, low interest rates, low inflation, so that everyone can afford groceries, a car, and a home. Support our police, strengthen our military. I want to wish a happy 77th birthday to the United States Air Force. And if you remember, I created Space Force, which was the last since Air Force, which will soon be five years old. Space Force has turned out to be very important. We will build a missile defense shield around our country. Keep critical race theory and transgender insanity out of our school. And we will keep men out of women's sports. We will defend the Second Amendment, restore free speech, and we will secure secure our borders, everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and hope. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and the crooked Democrats, and we must stop her country destroying liberal agenda once and for all. So get everyone you know and vote. We want a landslide that is very simply too big, too big, too big to win. Too big to win. Too big to win, Joe. Too big to win. Too big to win, Joe. I think we can do that. So on November 5th, 
We will save our economy. We will rescue our middle class. We will reclaim our sovereignty and restore our borders. We will put America first and we will take back our country because together we will make America.